Assalamu alaikum children, how are you doing today? Alhamdulillah, I'm doing excellent too. Without any further ado, we've got a jam-packed show for you today, so let's start off by seeing what Aya is up to. You know Aya, always without and about exploring. Subhanallah, today we are going to be looking at sharks. Sharks have the most powerful jaws on the planet. Unlike most animal jaws, both the sharks use the upper and lower jaws to move. A shark bites with its lower jaw first and then with its upper jaw. If you think about it, it's quite scary. It tosses its head back and forth to tear loose a piece of meat which it swallows whole. Each type of shark has a different shaped tooth depending on their diet. SubhanAllah there's lots of different sharks and Allah has created all of them. A shark may grow and use over 20,000 teeth in its lifetime. Sharks never run out of teeth. If one is lost, another spins forward from the rows and rows of backup teeth. Normally, sharks eat alone, but sometimes one feeding shark attracts other sharks. They swim up as quickly as possible and all begin to try to get a piece of their prey. They bite wildly at anything that gets in their way, even sometimes each other. Almost all sharks are carnivores, which means that they're meat eaters. They live on a diet of fish and sea animals, such as dolphins and seals, and even such animals like turtles and seagulls. Sharks even eat other sharks. For example, a tiger shark might eat a bull shark, and a bull shark might eat a black tip shark, and a black tip shark might eat a dogfish shark. The teeth of the carnivores are sharp and pointy. Their skeleton is made up of cartilage instead of bone, which allows for lots of flexibility. Cartilage is very different to bones. It's soft. Shark skin is made of denticles instead of ordinary fish scales. Denticles are hard, sharp teeth, and this helps to protect the shark from injury or even if another shark is coming to attack it with sharp teeth. Not all sharks are fierce, meat-eating sharks. Some are quite harmless. Oddly enough, the most harmless shark tends to be the biggest. The basking shark, the whale shark, and the mega mouth shark all fit into this description. SubhanAllah, there's so many different types of sharks. These huge sharks eat plankton, a tiny shrimp-like creature found in the ocean. To do this, they swim forward with their mouths wide open. Gill rakers at the back of their throat strain the tiny food from the water, just like you'd strain pasta from a sieve. One of the reasons that sharks are such successful predators is because they have super, super sharp senses. They can hear things from really far away and they can feel things on their body. Two thirds of shark's brain is dedicated to smell, which is very important to sharks. Some sharks have eyes similar to a cat. A mirror-like layer in their eyes allows them to see better when they're in water. This allows the shark to hunt in clear seas or even murky waters, where it's very hard to see things. SubhanAllah, there's so much we don't know about sharks, but yet there is so much information that we already do have. Allah's creation is so amazing. See you next time, inshallah. SubhanAllah, that was amazing! I have spoke about sharks, and I love sharks, especially when I go down with my family to the seaside and I get to play with a little sharkies in the water. SubhanAllah, I didn't know that when a shark loses a tooth, the other teeth from the back come forward and replace it. 
That doesn't happen to me, because whenever I eat an apple too hard, or I munch it like... Mm, unfortunately, my teeth don't go back. It really makes you think that we should really take care of our teeth. It's so important. Ooh, that actually reminds me. I know a really nice poem about teeth. Should I sing it to you? Okay. Got my toothpaste, got my brush. I won't hurry, I won't rush. Making sure my teeth are clean, front and back and in between. When I brush for quite a while, I will wear a happy smile. Yay! Remember children, never neglect your gums. This poem is just my favorite because it's always a great reminder. Let's go see what all the animals and insects in Saphir Forest are up to. Assalamu alaikum everybody, I'm Always Owl and today we have a special guest coming to give our majlis. Hoot hoot! Assalamu alaikum Miss Honeybee. Wa alaikum assalam everybody. Insha'Allah you are having a good day Miss Honeybee. Yes. I am having a good day today, but I am very busy. Today I'm making honey. SubhanAllah, Miss Honeybee. You must work so hard to make honey. Everything us bees do is because Allah has told us to. In the Quran, Allah says, Allah has taught the honeybee. In everything we do, Allah helps us. Alhamdulillah. It must not be easy to make honey. It is so yummy and good for us. It must be very difficult to make it. But you make it so well, mashallah. Once upon the Prophet's time, my great, great, great grandmother, who was also a honeybee, spoke to the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and his family, whilst he was sitting with Imam Ali. Peace be upon him. I didn't know that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family, could speak to insects. Yes, Prophet Muhammad was the greatest of all the prophets. He was perfect. He never made a mistake and always did everything to make Allah happy. He could speak to animals and insects, just like the Prophet Suleiman. My great-great-great-grandmother knew this, so when she saw the Prophet and Imam Ali, she was so pleased that she was buzzing around them whilst they were sitting in a garden. The Prophet Muhammad said to Imam Ali, this bee has made us her guest today. My grandmother then said, I have made some honey for you. And my grandmother gave the honey to them. And they thanked her very much. The Prophet Muhammad asked, You got honey from flowers which are not very sweet. They are bitter. How do you make your honey taste so sweet? And my grandmother replied, when we make honey, before we take the pollen from the flowers, we say salawat. We feel that we have to say Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. And when we do this, our honey becomes so sweet. Wow! If I do salawat, can I make honey? <laughs> Bees are very special, as Allah created us to make honey for you. So when we do salawat, we make honey and it is so yummy and so very sweet just for you. But when you do salawat, it is as sweet as honey to Allah. Thank you, Miss Honeybee. 
Insha'Allah, you make a nice honey today. Thank you. Insha'Allah, all the things that you do today will be just as sweet as honey to Allah. Wa alaikum as-salam. Wa alaikum as-salam. Salawatun, 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 Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. That is amazing. The honeybee recites salawat whenever they want to make honey. The Prophet spoke to insects just like Prophet Sulaiman. Now I'm going to try and do a salawat in everything I do just like Miss Honeybee. Ooh, I'm getting kind of tired now, but we're not just done with the show yet. We still have time for one story from Mr. Moon. See you next week, kids. Masalaba. Assalamu alaikum children. My name is Mr. Moon. Today Mr. Moon went to go see his mummy, Mummy Moon. I love Mummy Moon. The Prophet peace and blessings be upon him and his family has taught us that heaven lies under our mother's feet. So we should really love our mothers. Today, we have a poem and the poem is called My Mum is a Wonder. Oh, wonderful. Every morning when I arise, it always comes as a surprise to see my mum dressed and ready, reading Quran by the baby. She greets me with a smile so bright I forget that it was ever night and a salam that straight away fills me with peace for the whole day. Her warm cuddle has the power to get me to brave the coldest of showers. She dries me with a hug, a kiss. I close my eyes in pure bliss. She helps me dress and combs my hair. And I think, is this really fair? Why should I have the best of all when some children have none at all? Round the table we take a seat. My mum gives us breakfast to eat. She tells us, thank Allah for food that makes you grow and does you good. I thank him too for giving me such a good mum and family. Look after Mom Allah, please do. That's my best wish, honest and true. When I come home from school at four, whether we have one chat or more, it puzzles me how Mum can see what's on my mind. It's really beyond me. I help my Mum water and grow flowers and bushes, high and low. With her, I learn a seed can be a pink one day or a daisy. Each time she shows me how to pray, she reads Quran in such a way that I enjoy it from the start and Allah's words soon reach my heart. She gives money to poor people, visits the sick in hospital. We see friends with newborn babies as well as lonely old ladies. She cooks and sews to make our Eid happy and special with all we need, new clothes, new toys, delicious sweets, relatives, friends are all my treats. When I am sick and hot in bed, who stays with me and strokes my head? 
who leaves her bed for another to comfort me and make me better? Are you surprised that when she asks me to help her with a few tasks, I never refuse to, as only naughty children do? When I grow up to be a man, my dear mother will be a nan, and then who will look after her? When she gets ill and much weaker, why, little me, of course, her child, caring for her will be my pride. My joy, my thank you, oh mama, and bring me closer to Jannah. That was an amazing poem about my mum, and it was called My Mum is a Wonder. I think all mums are wonderful, and we should try our utmost best to make them happy, because Jannah lies under their feet. Well, I'm off to see Mama Moon once more to tell her how much I love her. You should do the same and tell your mum how much you love her. Anyway, that's all we have time for. Peace be upon you and your family from Mr. Moon. Good night.